Welcome back guys. So yeah, so with this video is basically Art of Fighting or Art of Combat Part 2. <laughs> so there is one bit that I did want to get into um in regards to like the the tunnel vision bit that you know like I was like just listening to it over and I was like oh shit I forgot to mention this part. So the way that you can really actually make it occur within fighting games is that you can basically force the action of the fight itself. See kind of like this. Let me make this full screen. It's like this interaction, you know, like this constant back and forth, just there's constant engagement, there's just all this shit happening, you know, it's like you're still paying attention to the positioning, you know, and the health bars and the meter and the traits. But the thing is, the way that you can enforce tunnel vision is that you basically you almost like purposefully omit doing certain things so that that way the opponent isn't as noticeable of it either. So like if you actually watch back some of my matches where this tends to happen. Like what I try to do is if I'm close to getting a super itself, I will actually just like prohibit myself from burning bar for a while. You know, even if I'm like, let's say like two bars and a half, you know, if I'm like, you know what, I think I can actually build up to four, I will purposefully not actually burn meter. You know, like I, I won't make it very noticeable that I'm not really not using it, you know, that I'm holding on to it. So that that way it's like I have all these interactions going, all this backdashing, reversals, you know, all, um, like all, all these like opportune moments you see like this, like all this like moving around, all this motions back and forth, you know, dashing in and out, you know, that itself, that chaotic movement or that chaos itself is actually what causes a form of tunnel vision because then like you're basically forced as the opponent you have to paint to mind like what's actually happening you know it's like you know this person's moving around and i still gotta hit them they're hitting me but i'm not hitting them you know it's like i gotta make something change something something's gonna happen you know or else i'm gonna lose so when they're focused on that and they're trying to get that those hits in and trying to understand you know like your positioning that kind of tunnel vision is not going to let them anticipate what your actual ulterior motive is what you're actually planning for you get what i'm saying you know kind of like that scene with gogo -Go. Where she had like the ball and chain, you know, like she was using that force tunnel vision of that eye contact to not basically give away what she was actually trying to do, which was to go for that kill, which is literally like this right here. It's like exactly what I was saying. See, so I'm actually literally doing the same exact thing right here. So the thing is, I already has three bars. He's likely suspecting that I'm going to super him. You know, I would imagine so like that he is going to expect that, you know, but he's still gonna try to cash in you know he's good he's gonna play it smart he's not gonna like close in see like that like he didn't just like rush in he's trying to like land all his hits you know he expects a super and I, I expect that he expects it you know see like right there though it's like that's just you didn't know you don't know the character you don't know her to that regard that you didn't know that that was not going to make contact you know and then that's how that punish wound up happening I don't remember if I anticipated the bash in, or maybe I anticipated like a dash, like in that instance. But the thing is, it's like I, I knew that I committed. See, like once I block, like I'm already. Oh, I didn't even do it, actually. Look, you actually see it. Like I'll play it a little slow, so you can see it. Let's wait. So this way it just plays. Look, we'll see right here. It's coming up. See, like right there, still, I'm still holding on to that. See, this is this is like those moments where it's like he's not really sure. Like he he can't decide because, just because it's so quick, you know. And also, even given the ping too, sometimes it makes it difficult to like really like understand. It's like to really choose the right one, but. Because I still have all these bars, you know, the thing is I can still afford to burn them. I can still build my bar back. I still have clash, you know, like I have four bars, you only have one. Like I can expend this a little bit, you know? So for that reason, if I do a bash, you can't tell if I'm gonna meter burn or not because I can also delay the meter burn, you know? And I have more than enough resources to like literally like do so, you know? It's just right here, see, it's just, it was just all this advanced movement. He could have just like ducked realistically, you know? And then I probably would have missed, but it was just like very inconvenient. 
Sorry for the yawn. It's kind of late. Um, oh, that's a little too far back. I see. Yeah, because look, I already recovered. As soon as she touches the ground, she recovers. See, I pause for a moment. I don't think. Where is this? Let me see. I'm not sure if he was still in recovery or if he started pressing. Oh, yeah, look, he started pressing. That's what it was. So, this is the thing about time and space. This is like a perfect example of it. So, see right here, what is actually occurring is that... So, he actually recovers on time, I recover on time. We don't actually make contact. We're, I don't think... There's, there's not actually a moment where we're actually neutral here. The thing is, I'm already plus. I recovered first already. Look, you'll see this right here. I land on the ground. Look, you're going to see her crouching. Look, I'm already crouching before he's able to start, like, crouching in that split moment. It's very quick, you know. If you need to play it slower, play it slower so you can see it for yourself. But the thing is, I recover first, so I'm already plus. The thing is, I notice that he's not pressing. This is just a frame trap right here. This is like a frame trap slash jail. You know, it's like, you're stuck in recovery. I cannot punish you, but you cannot press buttons in this instance. But because he started pressing, I just hit confirmed right into the super. And that's why that wound up happening. So, yeah. But yeah, that's how you that's how you enforce that tunnel vision too, you know? Where it's like they're not really paying attention because it's like they see the like, you know, like the health parts trickling down, it's trickling down. It's like, okay, I'm making that comeback, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, what's next, what's next? But the thing is, all the while I'm planning for the actual final move, you know. Like um like he's mentioned that comparison before where Wonder Woman does that. I mean she does it very well. But I think kind of any character really is capable of doing that. I think it's a matter of how good the player is capable of achieving it. Where it's kind of like a, like a shepherd, you know, basically like um, leading the lamb to the slaughter type of thing. I hate when I get like that kind of missed input where it's like I just stagger, I don't actually move. <laughs> that was a really nice movement. But yeah, so see, look, like this, like, I want to play this snippet a little bit. Let me play it. I'm going to play this slow so that you can actually just observe. After I do my stupid little stagger, <laughs> my little stutter walk where I don't move. So look, observe. See, see how I, I hesitate first. Like, I don't toss my shield right away. Look, it's not instant. I'm waiting to see what he's doing, and then I realize, okay, this is actually going to be safe. I didn't care if he was actually going to move. I just knew it was going to be safe, and that's why I did it right there. Then right here, see? I don't think that he intended to do that, that back dash itself. I think he just meant to do, like, um, like, a wave dash, like a back wave dash, and he just got the back dash instead, which I'm pretty sure he didn't want. See, because then because of that... He's now more negative, or we're both neutral. See, we both move at the same exact time. But because we're moving at the same exact time, right here, by the time that he's doing that and I get to jump back, I get to actually avoid it for that reason. See, and then right here. See, look, I get to jump, I avoid I don't do an attack, I just do the jump one, so I'm already recovering. He could have punished me, he didn't find it quick enough. So then I just did an instant straight shield, just to get him out the air, or to get any kind of movement in that area. See, again, here waiting, see? Don't air shield right away, you gotta wait. You gotta wait and see, you know? Just basically play to their movement, you know? Like, you gotta bear that in mind, especially, like, as Wonder Woman. It's like, you gotta keep that in your head. I am the one in control, you know? I am the one that has to decide the pace of the match. See, this was really good. Caught him there because of his miss input. Same right here. Look, we both basically recover in the same instance, but that catches the back dash. So see, it's like this is one of those scenarios where this is kind of like a checkmate situation. Where look, 
right here, we're basically both neutral. We recover at virtually the same exact moment. And this is the space that we're in right here. You know, so basically we're neutral. So the thing is kind of your best option is going to be to do the bash, you know, like either bash or block. You kind of really have no other choice in this scenario. Like you, you kind of really don't. You know, like with this specific matchup, specific positioning, specific circumstance with how much health is remaining. It's either you block or you bash. You know, there's kind of really no in between. If you jump, you're going to get hit. You know, if you duck, you're going to die by chip. Like, it, it doesn't matter. You have to choose. It's kind of like pick your poison, you know. right there like that last one block oh so there was like this part too in a previous video where there was a, a moment where i burned like four bars part of it was because of demeter just because like i needed to just cash out for that extra damage i'll probably leave commentary on it let's see i'll try i'll get to it see like right here i know for myself i'm building up to four i want to super him And now I got it. So because of how much health is remaining, so this is something that I just I just plan like in the spot, and you should plan it too, you know, especially if you have four bars, especially on the kind of the game that it is, the meta. I know that connecting just a raw super or a hit confirm into a super is an easy 40 to 45%. Which this is the 50 mark because it has like this little wedge that determines that it's 50. 40 is like around over here, give or take. So I just I have this much room to basically either land hits or to do chip. So I still have this much of a window of opportunity to actually like burn some meter and still build it back, you know? Because so long as it's from this point onward, I'm guaranteed that win. So long as I connect the super. So that's what I know for myself I'm working towards. If I can afford to not spend any bar at all, I'll choose not to, you know? But if it benefits me, see like right here, I'm still not burning it, but I'm close. I'm like in that in that instance, you know, I'm in that window. See, still not burning. See, but right there, I missed it. I was I wasn't paying attention. Now that down one two on block, I could have interrupted that gap with the super. See, but there you go. See, I'm still still anticipating it though. The thing is, it's just like it's like one of those instances where you don't expect like the unsafe thing. You know, like you don't expect it's like just presenting an, a window of opportunity just like right in there big wide open door you know it's like you don't expect it so when it just comes it's just like oh 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 shit you know like oh my bad i didn't realize it was open you know but then you pay attention to that you don't let it slip up again it's like right here like i knew that he was going to bash i knew he was going to do something Okay, I see. And then that's GD's. Okay, so now, sort of tied to that to an extent, because this does come into play. This is how I play, this is how I truly believe you are supposed to play, especially fighting games. So I'm gonna pause this again for a moment. So now I'm gonna be mentioning Into the Badlands. I love this show. I recommend you guys watch this show if you want to, if you like, like, actual like martial arts and that kind of fighting and whatnot so these are some spoilers so i apologize you know so i'm trying to i try to clip it or choose clips where it doesn't really spoil much like this right here is from i think like episode three or or maybe even episode two you know i don't exactly remember but it's very very early into like just the very start of the show you know so you're not really missing out on much necessarily so the whole point is like in this little background you'll hear the dialogue so basically she tried to basically kill his son no one comes so he's here to retaliate so the thing is clearly they're here to kill each other again you know life or death situation we're here to fight someone's walking out somebody is not Like the reason why I mentioned that is like right here. Look, right here. See, look. He caught the blade in his hand. Look, he's bleeding. See, this is what I'm talking about. See, the thing is, this is going to happen in a real fight too, depending on like the situation. But this, 
this is something to really get your head around. See, because if he had he not caught that, she literally would have just won right there. She would have just stabbed it right in the eye, and he's dead. That's it. Game over. You know. So the thing is, you have to understand, especially in a fighting scenario, if you're going into a fight to literally combat somebody to actually kill them, especially like in these kinds of situations, and even within fighting games, it's the same concept. Realistically, as crazy as that sounds, the thing is, you are going to get hit. It's a matter of how you choose to get hit. What kind of actual cut are you going to take? What are the cuts that you will take? Where is it that you're going to bleed? You know, where are those, mo where are those moments? Because the thing is, it's either you get cut and you walk out and you win, or you choose not to because like, oh, I don't want to get cut. You know, I don't really want to get a scrape. And then you find, wind up dying, you know, because you didn't actually do everything to your actual capabilities, you know, to ensure the win. And it's basically this prime example right here. You know, like basically this kind of necessary sacrifice. That's really what it is, an actual necessary sacrifice, you know, to ensure that you can still keep on going, essentially. You know, I'm, obviously there's no Enchantress in this, not yet. And I use Enchantress later on, you know, in the set. But Enchantress, amazing example for that altogether, you know, with Poppy Shababa. You know, it's like in certain instances, it actually is like a necessary sacrifice that she needs to make, you know, to take the hit take the trade but then let shibaba you know just kind of like reset the the whole game for her essentially you know and then with her sorry i was eating how many plate right here um but then you know like resets the whole game and then she can turn around in her favor regain health stop taking damage you know whatever the fuck it is that she needs to do uh, but yeah that was really just like this example here the rest of the fight can go on but you know it's kind of whatever it is what it is um I'm trying to think of another one. Alright, I guess this one too. This is a really good example of like tunnel vision. So I won't really go into detail with this. Oh, we actually, let me play the first fight of them. I feel like that might be better. So this girl right here, she's affiliated with this character, the Widow. So the Widow's trying to bust her out. She's trying to rescue her because she was captured. Because they're from, they're from like opposing territories, opposing armies. So this right here, obviously choreographed, but... This is not necessarily talking about like interactables and whatnot, like oh like use things to your environment and whatnot, not in that regard, not using fucking items that are built in, but it's more of really un understanding that concept, obviously use your environment, use what's around you in a real life setting, in an actual real fight. But when it comes to fighting games, the way that you interpret that into the virtual reality of fighting games is to understand that no matter your positioning, no matter the tools, you know, understand what are the circumstances that are involved in that scenario and then choosing and working around what those choices actually are, you know, and then choosing the more opportune choices altogether. So kind of like with this, for example, like, so, you know, like he hits her against the wall, right, or, or I'm to rewind a little bit further. So see, look, she gets backed up into the wall. So the thing is, see, there's no way for him to actually know when she's going to do this, but she can choose any moment to basically do that, you know, which is kind of like, ooh, like a corner escape, you know, bullshit. But the thing is, like, you can actually still do this when you're cornered, you know, it's just you have to understand how to do it with your character, you know, and choosing when is the right time to do so, where there is an actual option, there is a choice or several choices that can actually get you out of a corner position similar to that. It's just you have to choose when is the right time to actually do so, you know, because clearly you want out. Nobody wants to be cornered. You know, nobody wants to be a caged, cornered animal, you know, but the opponent that put you there in the first place, they're aware, obviously, you want out. I'm not going to let you out. I just got you there. I just put you there. You know, why would I let you out? Plain and simply. So, you know, they're going to naturally just barricade the fucking way out, you know, so that's why you have to choose your right moments to actually, you know, escape. See, and then even like that too, kind of like faster reactions. Obviously, again, choreographed and whatnot, but look. Look at how much faster. See, like, like he knocks her down, but the thing is, look, look, look at this. This is like so good. So like, this is something that actually occurs in fighting games. This is basically, this is a prime example of you cannot break frame data. Like, obviously, unless you're MK11, then you're the exception. But... You cannot break frame data. Frame data is the literal law of the game itself, of the foundation. You know, like, it cannot be broken. It is there. You have to abide by frame data. So basically how that happens here, as you can see, 
is that look when he kicks her he's basically plus he's still moving she's negative you know and then <laughs> look she still tried to get back up she tried to defy her negative frames i was like no you're gonna get fucking hit again then you know it's like you have to respect your negative frames plain and simply sorry <laughs> you know that's how it, that's how it is that's how it works so that's what she got hit right just basically negative 10 she tried to do a 20 frame move didn't work out So then even with this too, this is part of like knowing how to use your environment. So this is actually something that obviously, like I'm being very metaphorical with this stuff, you know? But look, she was using swords before, now she's using these dual maces, right? Thing is, look at how differently she's able to now fight because it's a different piece of weapon altogether. So it doesn't ensure her the win, she's still clearly not winning, you know? Still not actually landing a shot, but it's changing up how she's able to interact with the fight now. Because it's a different piece of weapon. It's a different tool altogether. Like, and then him too. He was using a sword. Now he's no longer using a sword. It's it's a hindrance now. So now he has to use a shield. See, so look. Like, just changing up what's actually being used. So the whole point of that is just that... Oh, look. And actually, it'll keep on going because there's more to this. I just remember this scene. So look. New weapons again. See? But then this part too, this could actually be the thing where it's like just because it's another weapon, another tool, doesn't mean that you're going to be good with it, you know? Just because you're kind of nice in general doesn't mean you're going to be nice with every single little bit, especially if you have no experience. So it's kind of basically what's going on here. It's basically her lack of experience with this weapon is what's causing her to lose in this fight. Because I believe like with these hooks, like she should be having the advantage because she's able to grapple onto like whatever kind of, I guess like one-armed weapon you know that could be used i think it's like the simplest way to really describe it but she's basically losing she's fucking it up you know <laughs> but that concept itself is kind of like with this like in a sense of understanding really you know it's like see like right here like using the jump three because i'm in that space using the bash because i'm in that opportune space using the air shield because that's the space to use it now that's the tool to use you know it's like right here now i'm using down one two because i'm there using down two and up bash because i'm there you see the bash because I'm right there. See, like, it's, you have to constantly basically just cycle around your entire tool set, you know. If you're an actual, like, balanced character, you have to do this, you know. Obviously, it comes to, like, really brain-dead characters. That, that's what classifies them as brain-dead or broke or OP when you can just use the same exact tool, the same exact move, you know, to literally just cover all your bases, you know. Look at that. I'm gonna let this play a little bit just so I can like let some of this run through. Because they keep on delaying it. I think there's only really like one more example that I want to use and then I'll just let the the footage itself play. Because this is also a component that comes into play with like fighting games or the art of combat and whatnot. So this, this is kind of very reminiscent to the first game, how that went with all of my avoiding. Sick like right there. I suspected that that was going to be a punish. See, but the thing is, it wouldn't have made sense for me to meter burn it. I would have got that extra chip, but for what reason? I would have just killed Bar for literally nothing. I was even if I burned a Bar, I was I was gonna get punished regardless. So there's no reason to burn your Bar in that instance, you know. Literally no reason. I see right here. I'm pretty sure I'm trying to build up to super. smacking her
trying to see how these are going. Like what to mention. Because I feel like I kind of really covered everything that I really wanted to discuss, you know? But there's still like 18 minutes left to this, so I'm going to have to figure something out, you know? So I guess like right here, this is sort of like, um, this is like that phase where you're really like testing out the waters, you know? Like you're really trying to see like where you can land the hits, like where do you have more success, like in what spaces, what areas, you know, highs, lows, overheads, you know, like what succeeds better. See like right here, I just burned all those bars just because I can keep on like stacking on the damage. I know that I'm going to keep on building meter. I expect that I'm going to get it, you know, pretty quickly. See like right there? Get down my meter. So that's how I was just gonna burn it all through, you know. It's a gimmick. That doesn't connect as a combo. But if like basically so the reason why you do that, if people aren't aware of this, like in general, like if you legitimately aren't aware of it, so the reason why this, why I did this is just because if I did the back three, then I'm pretty sure it would have linked, it would have connected, but then he could air tech out. I could have do back three, forward three, you know, but the thing is he still could tech out, you know, because it's not a meter burn back three or forward three. He could tech, you know, and the thing is I still wouldn't be doing like as much damage. Because then from this right here, after I do my back three, it's going to scale. It's going to scale again. You know, so I'll probably only get to, like, here, give or take, you know, depending. Or maybe, like, around here, I'd say. You know, because it's back threes. But because I reset it... Oh, wait, that was already... Those were already the hits. Oh, shit, I rewound too far back. Oops. Sorry, y'all. So, look. We're actually just going to see the meter burn. So, see, look, the meter burn, this was it. If I did the back three... Back three probably would have stopped right around here. Would have got one back three, then a forward three, you know, because it was Athena's buff. So forward three might have got me up to maybe around here, give or take, right? I'd say. Maybe. If even there. But look, because of how it is, look at how much more I'm able to stack it on. You know, because it just basically reset. You know? But the thing is, the reason why I did that also is because, let's say I didn't do the back three because I was a little too far away because that is a situation that happens with Wonder Woman as a whole. You know, like, if you're not close enough to connect a back three, like a raw back three after a shield toss, it just won't connect, you know, because you're too far. So in those instances, that's when you had to do forward two, three. If I did forward two, three, and he was expecting to clash, for, for you to clash that hit, he has to be holding forward and the clash button, you know, for him to clash that forward two. But because he did the forward three, he basically practically like you literally will walk into the forward three like within like that one or two frames you actually have available now because again it's not going to link but you only have like a one to two frame window to just like to backdash if you're trying to clash in anticipation of the next hit because the combo is going to continue then this is going to reset it you're likely going to get caught by it so then also on the same exact token the mind game behind it you know is that if an opponent knows that that's what's occurring, what you can actually do in certain situations is you can basically start up the forward three, dash cancel it, and then go for like a grab or go for a back two or something, you know? Basically just throw them off completely. I think he was trying to jump there or something, I'm not sure. Woman wins. So see, this is one where, this is, uh, like, the whole concept behind this itself, like, 
in regards to like, kind of like the art of fighting like what i i don't know what exactly what's acquainted as but i guess it's not really tunnel vision it's more of the um because i'm not trying to ridicule him at all like this this isn't what it's supposed to be by any means but it's more of just like it's kind of like i am pouting you know like it's not throwing a tantrum like that's really not what it is but it's more of just like it's like the concept I'm, I'm i'm characterizing it a little bit like giving it like a caricature and whatnot but the thing is it's like it's the whole concept it's just like you know it's like i don't like that you know i'm upset i'm gonna make sure that i hit you you know i'm really gonna touch you like oh you're really gonna get the bad side of me now you know type of thing it's just like that kind of mindset that headspace itself it's the emotional headspace essentially because in the previous video i spoke about the ego side now i'm talking about the emotional whether you're overly angry or you're overly embarrassed or you're even overly sad let's say you know because of like the outcome of the previous match you know, like you're in your feels you know whatnot basically anything that gives like a very very strong emotional response an opponent that is very well versed i guess like within fighting itself is able to detect when those instances actually are they'll notice the changes in your patterns you know in your habits in the choices that you make you know like there, there's going to be a very distinct difference with like how clean quote-unquote clean you were playing before you know versus now that you there's a little cloudiness there you know now it's a little stormy now there's that emotion that's swirling into play it, it affects the the trajectory you know of how your gameplay itself was going originally like you can be more reactionary as a result of being emotional you know like you'll be more on point you're kind of more focused it's kind of like your adrenaline is pumping you know fight or flight like you're very honed in but because you're so honed in you inadvertently give yourself now that tunnel vision you know now crossing into different territories a different concepts you know of fighting so it's like it it doesn't work out well you know and that's what i was mentioning in a previous video you have to have like that discipline between the ego and the emotional state you know to actually have like that clear headspace that clear mental state you know basically all the time kind of 24 7 really like that's the discipline when it comes to fighting games specifically so the reason why i'm mentioning all of that and i'll go back to this is for the last clip which was here so basically he's trying to get vengeance you know onto her you know he's trying to he's trying to exact blood and he, he's within his rights but you know she has remorse you know the thing is he, he doesn't want to hear any of it you know he's just like I i'm here to finish a job like fuck you but the thing is see like right here she genuinely is trying to make a change but the thing is in this instance she's recognizing his rage she's recognizing just how upset he actually is and now she's no longer fighting within that emotion and she's just recognizing it's just like he's just working completely out of anger you know so the thing is when you become too emotional you actually do become too predictable you know like you will develop specific patterns based on that emotion itself like if you're too like sad for example or too depressed you know or like you feel bad because of how the previous matches went or you're not doing that good you're going to be very like uh very small you know very cowardly you know you're not going to assert yourself as much you're not going to establish your presence you're not going to really follow through with the momentums that you get you know whereas when you're too angry you become a lot more reactionary more impulsive you know very much you don't really care what's actually happening you're willing to take hits to the face you know because it's like i'm just gonna get that hit and, you know it's like i am gonna punch you you know i don't care if i get punched in the way i'm gonna punch you you know it, it's like you start developing those kinds of patterns you know very like um habitual instances of being just very headstrong as a whole and then what was the other one what was the other emotional state that i was mentioning i don't remember or I guess or it's like when you get like too embarrassed or too ashamed, you know, because like let's say either the player was taunting, you know, or you just did something very, very stupid the previous match where you're not shy, you know, you're not like humiliated, but you're like, you know what, I need to get even, you know, I don't like how that turned out. What happens in those instances is that you become so focused on trying to land that hit, not so much as being upset, like, oh, I'm still going to hit you, you know, but it's more of just like, you know, it's like, I, I got to, what was the word? I got to atone. You know, like, I got to clean my slate. Like, that was just embarrassing. You know, I can't believe I did that or I can't believe that happened. That can't happen again. You know, like, trying to basically iron that out, trying to clean that up itself, 
while staying in that emotional state, that's not going to actually work out for you. Like, it's actually not going to do anything, you know? You can convince yourself to some degree, but if you still keep yourself and you're still acting within that emotion itself, it's still going to affect the gameplay. You're still going to have the literal same exact patterns, you know? So, I'm just mentioning all of that just so you can see that here in a sense of, again, choreographed, I get it, but this happens, like, in actuality, too, you know, in any case. But see, it's like, this is what she starts noticing. Because he's just upset, you know? But basically, what it does is that it becomes easier to telegraph what you're going to do next when you're stuck in your emotional state. Because, like, right here, she's got the right movement. And then even this right here, this concept itself, like this, I love this this little scene right here, just like that run up. This concept of basically no quarter given, kind of, it. I mean, there is mercy being shown because if there was if there was no mercy, she would have just killed him, you know. But the thing is, like this concept of just never letting up, don't give them a chance to breathe, don't give them a chance to get up, like this concept, like all these checkmates, all these winning moves, kind of like in a previous video, you know, like, we'll kill Bill. Um, you know, how she used the leg of the table to, you know, whack the nails into the side of the girl's head, into Gogo's head. And then against Oren, she used the sword to slice off the top of her head, you know. Or, like, here, the finishing move could have just stabbed him right there. And this one, that finishing move was going to be to the eye, you know. Like, um, and the examples, the list can go on, on, like, all of what all these quote-unquote finishing moves are, all these winning moves, you know, all these final hits. The beauty within fighting games is that realistically, everything and anything can be a final hit. Everything and anything can be that killing blow, you know? It's really just a matter of what the, really just what the circumstances actually are, you know, that, that determine what that move is actually going to be, what that attack, what that final hit is actually going to be. But the thing is, what these finishing moves are, like this aspect itself, you have to wrap your head around it with fighting games that you never want to really let up. Like, unless it's more beneficial because of the matchup itself, you know, for you to like back away, give them some space, you know, just that, that way you get a more opportune Oki or something like that, you know, it's like obviously that's something different. But even that itself, by, by you doing that, but you're still in an advantageous spot, kind of somebody like Enchantress, for example, you know, like, just the aspect of doing that and still staying at advantage, like, that's still you enforcing your presence. That's still just going over and over and over. Like, basically just not letting up on the opponent. You Essentially, you never really want to let up on them because the fight is never over. It doesn't matter if you did, like, a 60% combo. You know, if they still got 140% health left, they still got 140% health, you know? Like, the fight isn't over until it's over. And I feel like that concept itself is just, like, really to sink in with certain people, you know? Like, I'm not trying to call anybody out in particular. Just That's not how this should be taken at all. I'm just saying, like, I feel like certain players in general, you know, like, newcomers or people that are just coming into the scene, right? They started with MK11 or they started with Injustice 2. doesn't really matter. You know, the thing is, it's like, you have to get that discipline in. But it's not really a discipline. I guess it's more of um, almost like tossing away your humanity, in a way, of sorts. Almost kind of like, you know, looking into the abyss, becoming a monster type of thing. You have to be comfortable with literally going for the kill. Because clearly you're not, quote, exactly literally killing the opponent, you know, within a fighting game. But the thing is, you literally are actually killing the character. Like, you are trying to cause a death there. Because you're trying to drop that health to zero, you know? So you have to be comfortable, literally actually comfortable, with doing whatever it takes to actually get there. So that's why I'm referencing all these points of, you know, because that's the action, because it's actually occurring, because you're actually going in there to kill one another, quite literally, just like all these fight scenes where people are actually trying to kill each other, you know, kill one another, you know, like, you have to bear in mind where are you going to take these hits, because they're not going to go down without a fight, you know, it's like, hey, you're trying to kill me, guess what, I'm fighting for my fucking life, <laughs> you know, like, you're not just going to do that for free, you know, 
So it's choosing and recognizing where those opportunities are going to be, or not so much opportunities, or maybe they could be an opportunity for the opponent, you know? Like, where is it beneficial for them where they're actually, it's likely they're going to land a hit, you know? They could land something. It's up to you to control where those instances actually are and how impactful it's going to be. Like, that is your responsibility, you know, to determine how significant those outcomes are going to be. But, okay, I think I spoke a lot, so let's get back into this. So that's kind of basically what's happening here, in a way. You know, in a sense that it's like, I'm basically just playing a response to whatever he's doing right now. You know, he, he's constantly, like, sort of, like, trying to still engage, but the thing is, it's like, I'm just... I'm literally keeping myself like anchored in a spot where I still have the advantage at every single instance. But the thing is, because he's still he's noticing this health difference again. This is my speculation, but I'm assuming because he's noticing this health difference, I'm still landing hits. You know, he's not in an opportune spot to actually like corner me and get things started necessarily. He's just trying to land anything, he's just trying to make any hits count. You know. But staying in that headspace of trying to just make anything count, you're not going to realize the big picture, you know? You're too focused on the now when you have to be focusing on the now and at the same time still be planning for the next, you know, like five moves after the fact. See, so, now I'm planning for the super. I know myself. So that's why it's like for me, I'm taking like um, calculated risks right here. I don't care if I really get hit. Just like I have more than enough health to expend. You know, and me getting hit in a process, that means I get to build super. I get to build bar. But yeah, that was the last video example. So hopefully I shouldn't really stop the video anymore from this point onward. I'll just, just talk over as it let it play so that way you guys can see the matches and I can also just discuss anything that I feel like I left out before oh so and also for that reason just because you know it's like the players that I that I play with you know the ones that I upload matches I, I speak with them you know I hang out with them you know and this is like always the case in general you know like especially people that I upload like often you know or often enough it's like I don't just do it just because you know it's like I, I know them relatively well you know um, obviously, and I've admitted it, and I've apologized, you know, like, where I have crossed boundaries, you know, I've said, like, stupid shit, but, so one of the things that, the whole reason why I mentioned all of that was because, you know, like, me, me and Blood were talking about, like, these matches, and, you know, like, he was mentioning how it was close and stuff like that, and there are a lot of close matches, but what I want to mention with that, I figured it might be easier to mention in the video as opposed to, like, all the text and everything, you know, or even just, like, getting on a call or whatnot, is that that aspect of how close it can be is also something that is actually calculated you know like at its highest level at an opportune level even like um oh i lied i'll show one more example again or this example because again like this it's like right here like it's choosing how much damage you're willing to take see like right here again this is this is a theory but it would make sense just because she is this killer. She like she literally is a killer of this caliber. You know, like she is considered the, like the top rank killer, like for this reason. You know, like things don't just happen just because they're not just fortunate, just because. You know, it's kind of like Lex Luthor. I think he said that in Injustice One, where fortune favors the the prepared. You know. No, change this song, bro. Um, yeah, fortune favors are prepared. So see, like right here, it almost even sounds like she's even setting up like the. Look, I'll pause this for a moment. It almost sounds like she's even setting up like the the wood. Look, you hear it? Like she's setting it up in like the opportune spot again. I could this could just be pulling it out my ass, you know, quite literally. But the thing is, it's like it is. When you kind of like put everything in place, it would make sense, you know, like it fits the plot itself in its entirety, and it also fits the whole concept of fighting, you know. 
So see, it's like this is the damage that you're willing to take. You're willing to face this humiliation. You're willing to face, you know, this near-death experience, essentially. Just that that way you actually get this opportunity, you know? Like, you know it's going to be close. You know, you know that you're basically walking a fine line. But you have the confidence and you have the experience and the follow-through that, you know what? You're not going to let that opportunity slip by. When you get that open window, you're going to take it, you're going to win. And the whole reason why I'm mentioning that, like the literal whole reason. I'll go back to this fight. But the whole reason is just that that's how fighting games basically operate at its core. Like, at a high level, you begin to understand what the damage interactions actually are. Like, on chip, on whiff punishes, standard punishes, anti airs, air to airs, you know, conversions, BMBs. Like, you understand overall what the damage exchange is going to look like, you know, depending on the matchup. Especially if, if you're <coughs> familiar with the matchup. You know, like, you understand the spaces where you'll take certain hits, you know, certain damage in certain spaces. So then you basically just work around that. So like, right here, I'm planning for the super again. I know that I am. I don't know if I'll succeed, but... It's like, right there, that was my fuck-up. I should have just done it right there. I don't know if it would have killed or not, but it would have been extremely close. As opposed to just throwing the match. Like right here. I think that it's just, I didn't expect that jump one to even hit. I expected it to get blocked. I felt like it was obvious, but I expected it to get blocked. I didn't expect it to actually hit, you know? <laughs> I guess like that's one thing I won't stop the video but that's like I th this is how you should play realistically because when you fully understand this and you play this and you incorporate it then that's when you really unlock like the full access of your character you know and the full access of high level play is that everything that you basically do in the neutral like if you're not already landing like a like a hit confirm you know or a successful hit you know or a conversion or whatnot like if that's not occurring you should be expecting that whatever you're doing to hit the opponent, because it's in the right space, right time, you might get some advantage, like some plus frames, or it's a safe move to throw out, it's safe chip, whatever it may be, you should expect everything to basically get blocked. You should really never expect it to actually land. Which sounds kind of crazy, but the thing is, that's kind of the nature of fighting games, because nothing's actually going to really kill you in like one instance, you know? Like, it's different with actual fighting, because if you land a certain, like, critical hit, you know, or, like, the right punch, you know, if somebody has a glass jaw or whatnot, you know, like, it'll determine how many hits they can actually take, but it's it's still going to be finite, you know? Whereas with fighting games, there's a set value, you know, and unless it's some, like, wild-ass design, nobody's killing you in just, like, two touches, you know? Like, it's going to take a little bit. So for that reason, you should expect things to get blocked, you know, because naturally you have a, a, a finite amount of health. You have a fixed amount of health there, you know, and unless you're a character that can heal, you are not getting it back, especially if you already use up the clash. There's no way to get that health back. It's gone. It's indefinitely gone, you know, forever. So you don't want to be getting hit for that reason, because you don't want to be getting hit and you're not trying to get hit. You're going to be blocking. So that's why expect your shit to get blocked. Because when you expect things to get blocked, then you work around the block frames themselves, and the block positioning, and the block stuns, and the block pushback. You know, you work around that, so that that way you understand how to maneuver that, so that that way when you land your hits now, now when they actually start connecting, you understand how to set things up so that should that following hit that's a jail or a frame trap, should it now get blocked again, you know, you're still going to be in the right spot and in the right positioning to still follow through anyways. If that all made sense. Which I apologize if it didn't, but I don't really know how else to explain it in a simpler way. <laughs> that air shield should have hit. That was bullshit. See, if I have Athena, those are the few times where I actually will always meter burn my bash. Because it, it does so much fucking damage.
Oh yeah, where's the music, bro? We got the music. All right, good. There's only like ten minutes left. So it'll be done once it once the video is over. I'm just gonna end it too. And then, so after this, we have Harley versus Joker. Those were pretty long. Those videos, so I probably won't. I'll try not to use as much like clips or whatnot, just because those videos like they they are long. Um. So I might even just like I might just do. So guys, let me know about this. Because this is something I did want to know too. Um, where you know I have music playing in the background. Would you care if I just had music playing like just standard music and not like the in-game music, and that was it? Just no commentary, no text. You know, just the footage and the music, just to, like vibe to. You know, just leave it at that. Because that's something I wouldn't mind doing. It would be a, a very big time saver. You know, all together. Um, but, you know, in either case, it doesn't really matter either way to me. See, like, right here? Look, I want to show this really quick. This is me being just cunty in general. Where is it? I think I passed it. So, see, look, right here? There's this moment where... See, because on the blue one... See, look right here. He made it burns the bash. Look right here, right here. Where is it? I think it was. I think it was that instance right there when he did that meterless bash. Because I'm expecting him and people in general to, you know, block and to not want to get hit by shit. See, the thing is, that's kind of what basically made this shit safe, right over here, in that moment. Let me back up a little. Bit. See, like right there. Hold on, where, where, where's this timestamp? Look, I'll show it again very quickly. See, right there, right in the essence. Because basically, he's moving back. So because he's moving back, there's more space that's being created for the bash to actually make contact. The longer it takes for the bash to make contact, the safer it becomes. So basically, his his method of trying to outmaneuver is literally making it safer for me, you know, to use my attacks. Like, that's her actual strength in its entirety. Like, Wonder Woman as a character. Like, that's where he coined it as, like, you know, her being, like, a shepherd to the opponent, you know. But I think, again, I really think anybody can kind of really do this, any character as a whole, with, like, good space control in its entirety. The thing is, she just does it so quickly. So it's, like, I feel like it's more noticeable. And she doesn't do as much damage. Like, if it's just, like, shields and lassos and whatnot, she's not doing that much damage, you know? Like, she's not deleting your health bar. So, you, you, I think that you just notice it a lot more, just because it's occurring, you know, so much more frequently. Also, I'm really tired, y'all. I got work in the morning. Well, it's already morning. I got work in several hours, really. <laughs> so... But I'll be good. It's a short shift, so. See, like, right there, like, that... I, personally, I don't agree with that. Like, I get the reasoning behind it. I wouldn't have air tech right there. Like, I, I get it. But if you were going to do that, I think that it would have been better to just clash in that instance. Because now you're... You have no bar at all. And I'm about to have super, you know? And now I do have super. See, because look. <laughs> That's just me being cunty. It's like, am I gonna burn the bash? Am I not, you know? So see, this is something that I notice other Wonder Womans do in general. Something I'm guilty of. Something to change your habits, hopefully, everybody. If you're down one two, if you're doing down one two in general, never down, never cancel down one two into anything unless you're gonna do down one two into a meter burn bash. If you're down one two, you know full and well it's connecting, it's hitting. 
obviously down one two into your shield toss and get your full blown combo. But if you can't tell if it's actually gonna punish or not, either just do down one on its own, down one two on its own, or down one two into the bash. Never ever ever do anything else. And that's advice for myself too, because I, I clearly don't follow it all the time. But I'm just saying for you, you'll do exceptionally well if you stick to that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, look at that instant error. I was like, what's that noise? I was hitting my hitbox. My bad. That was very unfortunate. It's just, I'm just watching this and it's like, it's a little difficult at times. Like, I'm, I'm seeing like the little stutters that the two of us have. It's really just because of the ping. Like, and I never really noticed just how different it is up until I play with my other friend, Tim. Uh, you know, the other player, I'm getting joked. Because like, we, we live near each other, so that's really convenient. So online itself, like, it just, it feels so like, crisp and smooth, you know, like our ping is usually like 60, like 50, 60, depending. But it's like being able to actually like really play in that kind of connection and really explore her, understand her and train against like a kit like Superman's, for example, you know, where he's floating and he's just dashing everywhere and like really understanding where everything connects. Oh my God, it's such a big difference when you play like in this now, you know, like in, in higher ping altogether. Like, you, you realize just how reactionary she actually has to be. Like, obviously she works based off her reads as well, you know, just as any other character, but her kit, her as a character, you need to literally be reactionary. Like, you literally have to see what's occurring real time and constantly keep on responding in real time, you know, exactly what's supposed to be occurring. Like for us around this ping i think this is like the threshold this is kind of like the cap of it like around this like 115 130 ish range like that's like the, the max once you get higher than that it's just like it's just not practical they are basically just frauding shit you know and you don't get any actual real experience i missed that window right there I believe this is the last match, so we can end this video. Yeah, I believe this should be the last one. Oh, this Hestia. I covered this before too. You guys might want to check it out again. Like Animation Deception uh, is the name of the video. Um, 
But basically the whole concept is, and, and I, I use this a lot, I basically use the animation of the character, like what they're physically doing, and I use that as a way to basically throw off the opponent. You know, based on their actual movements, if that makes sense. It's kind of like if the if the character's raising up their arm, you know, it's likely they're gonna raise up their arm because they're gonna strike down. You know, if they're winding up their arm, they're gonna they're, they're tossing up a like a like they're pitching a baseball. You know, it's likely because they're gonna toss a baseball. You know, but I do that and then I do something else entirely. If that makes sense. Like that's how I use the animation, like to my advantage personally. Um, but yeah. So that's basically it here, guys. Um, and again, please comment, let me know. And I hope you all are doing well. Take care.